This midrange supposedly has minus three turn, but as you can see, it doesn't. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. This is Flight Numbers Don't Matter, and that was a UV Glow Meteor from Discraft. And that's just one of the discs we'll be testing and comparing today because we have this entire stack of understable midranges. And we'll be putting them in order of stability to show you why shopping for a disc purely based on flight numbers is risky business. Back to that Meteor though, rated at 55 negative 31, you might expect it to be pretty understable. But whether it's this UV Glow plastic, or the fact that this one is max weight, it just didn't want to turn. On the other hand, we have this Westside VIP Tursus, and while its flight numbers of 55 negative 21 might make you think it has less turn, you'd be wrong, because the Tursus is way more understable, so much so that it catches edge and rolls. And yes, it's also max weight. We're gonna be plotting all of these understable midranges on this graph, according to the distance they travel, up and down, or stability, with overstable on the left and understable on the right, just like you right-handed backhand throwers out there. Which means the Meteor goes here and the Tursus goes here. As I was working on this video, I was talking to somebody about the discs they have in their bag, and it seemed like they had most of the slots covered. An overstable putter, mid-range, fairway and distance driver, a straight version of each of those, but they didn't have hardly any understable discs and no understable mid-ranges. And I thought this was surprising because honestly, understable midranges are one of the best selling types of discs on our website. On top of that, our understable mystery box, the technician box is also a bestseller. But hey, who am I to judge? Everyone has their own style. I was curious though what they threw for that type of shot since they weren't bagging an understable midrange. And they said they opted for overstable forehands instead with either approach discs or fairway drivers to just get as far right as possible. Which hey, makes sense. You want a disc to go to the right, you throw a disc that can go to the right, however you can make that happen. But an overstable forehand shot isn't exactly the same as an understable midrange. Here's my personal overstable approach disc, the Castaplast Yarn. And boy, does it like to go right. But let's compare it to another of our understable midranges, the Infinite Discs Kansu. Named after the Egyptian moon god that you may have recently seen in Marvel's Moon Knight, its flight numbers of 55, negative 30, sound like it should be getting right quite a bit. Off the tee, Caleb gets it to flip up nicely. It moves off to the right, nice and smooth, and holds that smooth turn. And that's a great looking flight. Imagine a tightly wooded fairway, and you're just peering a gap partway down that fairway. Fantastic. That shot is pretty hard to do though on an overstable forehand. The yarn, for example, is finishing well shorter than that. And you can try to make that same shot with an overstable fairway like this Raptor that we tested in a video earlier in this series, but then you bring in a lot more speed and the potential for that disc to skip even further right. Now, hey, sometimes that's the shot, but sometimes it isn't. And I don't think that we're seeing the exact same shape from an overstable forehand and an understable backhand. Understable midranges, for example, are great at getting right, but then pushing further and further down that line to maybe open up the gap for your next shot. And they most certainly have a place in most players' bags. Speaking of place, that means the Kansu needs to take its place on our graph, which is gonna be right about here. And let's move on to our next understable midrange, the Fuse. Now we've thrown the Fuse before in some of our straight midrange tests, and we found it to be a little bit too understable. Rated at 5.6, negative 1.0, it's a tricky one. Lots of people love it as a straight midrange, but it just never really fit in those tests for us. So we thought, why not try it here? But we don't just have one fuse today, we have two. We have an Opto Ice Orbit Fuse, which is a stiff premium blend that's honestly one of my favorite looking plastics on the market right now. And we also have the Frost Fuse, which is a flexible rubbery blend designed to be used in colder temperatures. And if you happen to have watched our Throwing Every Trilogy Plastic Ever video, you know what's about to happen. The Opto Ice Orbit Fuse comes out on a slight hyzer, like all these throws will, and starts to turn over, but then just stops, holds straight, and fades out. While the Frost Fuse gets a lot more turn. Which puts them here and here on our graph, nowhere near each other. And this is a good time to point out just how crucial plastic is in these sorts of situations. 
Shopping for a disc based on flight numbers can only get you so far. You need to ask around, maybe do some research and understand the differences between different plastics. Can you find something that has both the feel and stability that you're looking for? It's gotta be out there somewhere. Let's move on though from the Fuse to something a little bit different. You see, we spend a lot of time in these series talking about how flight numbers don't match up with the disc, but we don't talk often about the disc type itself being wrong. Here's what I mean. This says it's a mid-range. You might be curious that it says it's a three-speed, and then you might look at the profile and say, I'm pretty sure that's a putter. This is the Kang, manufactured by Yikun in China, the company behind Discmania's active line. The Kang is a three-speed, quote-unquote, mid-range, rated with five glide, negative two turn, and zero fade. But is a disc a mid-range just because a manufacturer says so? Let's find out. Okay, maybe it is a mid-range. The Kang flies great, it flips up slowly, holds a gentle turn, and kind of fades forward for some pretty decent distance. I do think it feels and flies a lot more like a putter than a mid-range, but it earns a spot here on our graph. And I think it's time we play a little game. I'm gonna show you two mid-ranges and you tell me which one do you think has minus three turn? Is it this one or is it this one? Mid-range A or mid-range B? Okay, go ahead and cast your vote and let's take a look at how they fly. Mid-range A on the left and mid-range B on the right. And mid-range A is a Discraft Z-Flex Glow Soul rated at four five minus three zero. And mid-range B is a Castaplast K1 Svea rated at five six negative one zero. And if my eyes don't deceive me, the Castaplast Svea is a bit more understable than the Soul. Oh, flight numbers. Anyways, the Soul lands here, the Svea lands here, and next up is an understable mid-range from my own bag. It's the Buzz SS. Rated at 5.4, negative 2.1, the Buzz SS has actually made its way into my bag as a straight mid-range. But in different plastics, you can definitely expect different flights. And of course, everyone's different. So how will it fly for Caleb? Well, here this Z-Dye Buzz SS is nearly as straight as it is understable, getting a slow, smooth turn before an equally smooth fade. Very nice. But if you're looking to replace a forehand shot, the Buzz SS is probably not going to be your go-to. So it lands right about here on our graph, flying very far, but not very understable. And now let's take a look at a couple other discs that share the same negative two turn and one fade. Starting with this, the Lone Star BB-6. Rated at four, five, negative two, one, the BB-6 bears a striking resemblance to the Discraft Soul. But does it fly anything like the Soul? Well, if the Soul was in any other plastic today, probably. But that Z-Flex glow is a little more overstable than most souls. The BB-6, though, is a very understable, quickly turning over from a Heiser release. However, it does get pretty decent distance. It's definitely one of the most understable discs we've tested so far, but let's see how it compares to the Jester Disc Golf Peace Train. Also rated at 5.4, negative 2.1, we tested the Peace Train in our first impression series a couple months ago, and as you're about to see, we found it to be a little touchy when it comes to release angle. For example, thrown on a tiny hyzer, it flips up, holds a big turn before fading forward. Not bad. While on more hyzer, it only flips just past flat before fighting out for a straighter flight. We also threw one again while we were testing these mid-ranges, and it was a touch more overstable. It did fly pretty far though, so the Peace Train finds a spot here on our graph, and we'll move on to, you guessed it, another negative 2-1 disc, the MVP Detour. Finally available in stock Neutron Plastic, MVP has added the Detour to the James Conrad line with the Nomad, Detour, Terra, and Zenith, rated at 5.5, negative 2.1, the Detour feels and looks quite a bit like the Meteor. But I'll tell you right now, it did not fly like our Meteor. Just look at it go. 
Now I wanna point something out, just because it flew really far to the right doesn't mean it was the most understable disc. In fact, quite the opposite. The fact that it pushed so far right and forward means that low speed stability was trying to kick in and that opens up yet another shot shape for your bag. So the detour lives up to its name, taking you perhaps not on the path you planned for, but instead the path that you needed. Now for our last negative two one disc, it's the Doomsday Scavenger. Now the Doomsday Scavenger doesn't really look or feel like any disc that we've seen so far. It's pretty deep, very domey, and in this premium isolation plastic, it's also very tacky and quite flexible. So with nearly the same numbers as the Buzz SS, the BB-6, the Peace Train, and the Detour, surely you would expect the Scavenger to also have at least a little turn to it. Hmm. Okay, okay, all right, that was a little high. Let's try again. Okay. Well, the Scavenger is easily the least understable disc we tested all day, and certainly has the least accurate flight numbers so far, probably more deserving, in this case, of a 0-2, which would put it way over here on our graph. Let's see if our next disc, though, can get back on track with expectations. Here we have the Discmania Origin. This is the Signature Series version Midnight Prowl for Kyle Klein from a couple of years ago. And I will admit I've been bagging this one for a while, but I promise you, this is how it flew when it was brand new as well. So if the Scavenger was way more stable than expected, the Origin, also doesn't meet expectations and is way more understable because it's rated at 55 negative 11. So it's gonna find its place here on our graph. And that leaves us with these five discs with a combined negative 19 turn between them. Pretty sure we're gonna find our most understable mid-range right here. Let's get started with the Discraft Stratus. The Stratus is the oldest mold we're testing today, approved by the PDGA way back in 1997. It's mostly out of production these days, beyond the limited run Ledgestone editions produced every year or two. This year's edition looks pretty good in ESP swirl. They also feel pretty fantastic too, but will they live up to the flight numbers of 54 negative 41? Okay, whoa, all right. So eventually the Stratus shows that turn, but it certainly took its time. This being the latest turn that we've seen from any disc so far. The Stratus flips the flat, holds there for a very long time before finally breaking right. And this is again, just one of those moments that I'm always excited about in this Flight Numbers No Matter series. On paper, looking at flight numbers, you only get a tiny blurry snapshot of how a disc might fly. But when you get out and start throwing and comparing, things become clear and you start to learn these little fine details about discs that you just can't know from shopping by flight numbers. So big shout out to the Stratus for reminding us how important it is to get out and throw some discs and not assume that they're gonna fly a certain way. It's gonna find a spot here on our graph and we move on to another disc with minus four turn and one fade and one 26 years younger. It's the Innova Rolo. Approved in 2023, the Rolo is rated at 5.6, negative 4.1. And is definitely unique in shape compared to any of the discs we've tested. It has a sharp pointed wing, but turned down and a very low parting line gives it a nice domey feel in the hand. Innova marketed the Rolo as a roller disc for anyone. So let's see if they're right. Caleb throws it with not too much power and on just a little bit of hyzer. And not only does it flip up and turn, but even though it looks like it's coming in for a cut roller, as soon as it hits the ground, it quickly stands up and gets a nice forward roll to add another 50 to 70 feet and even finishes slightly right, which makes the Rolo one of our most understable discs for sure, but also some pretty solid distance. But even the Rolo doesn't quite make the top three because we have two honorable mentions before we declare our winner. The first honorable mention is gonna go to the Axiom Paradox. Now in a lighter weight or maybe neutron plastic, the Paradox might easily be the most understable mid-range period. But still with flight numbers of 5, 4, negative 4, 0, you can actually count on the Paradox to turn every time. 
What's impressive though, is that it doesn't burn out immediately, at least not in this proton soft plastic from the OTB open paradox. Like we talked about earlier, plastic plays a huge role and in other blends, the paradox would be even more understable. So it'll find its home way over here on our graph and we'll move on to honorable mention number two, the Divergent Discs Leviathan. Now, if you've been watching our channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen some of our other experiences with Divergent Discs. But are these shots crazy or are they just discs that are not made for an MA1 player that throws 400 plus feet of power and torque? Probably the latter. Either way, we have another one today, the Leviathan, which is rated at 5.4, negative 4.0. And we once again have it in this rubbery max grip plastic, weighing in around 160 to 165 grams. And let's be clear, these discs are marketed towards beginners, but let's see how Caleb handles it. On a standard golf line, it flips over quickly, gets a pretty significant cut roll off to the left. Not the most useful shot. On more of a distance line, it flips over, keeps on turning and hits edge to roll, but the direction it rolled seemed very random. We had some go left, some go right. It was kind of all over the place. But what you really want to do with this disc is just get crazy and have some fun. Thrown very high and very hyzer, it still somehow comes back. I will admit I could not see it at all when it was up in the air, so traced it as best I could, but lo and behold, it reappears and right there is the most fun way to throw 350 feet. So a very honorable mention to the Leviathan, which finds a place somewhere over here on the graph, which takes us to our most uncontrollably understable disc we tested today, the Lone Star, Lone Wolf. Yep, that's right. You probably didn't see this one coming. The meat hook specialists themselves, Lone Star, have somehow produced a disc so understable we're not really sure if it's usable, although I'm sure somebody, somebody could use it. This was definitely a surprise to me. The Lone Wolf isn't rated as super crazy understable. I mean, minus three, but as we've seen today, that doesn't really matter. It even claims to have one fade. But let me ask you, does this look like one fade to you? Basically max weight, 175 grams, Bravo plastic, uh, this is just, it's just so almost unusably understable. Most Lone Star discs are more overstable than the flight numbers and by quite a bit. So it's definitely a surprise, even for a disc that says it's gonna be understable, to be this understable. So there you have it, our finished graph of very understable mid-ranges with the Lone Star Lone Wolf taking its place uh, somewhere over here on the right-hand side. And we hope you enjoyed. If you saw a mid-range that you liked in this video, why don't you head on over to sixsideddiscs.com where while supplies last, you can purchase these mid-ranges that we tested and take 10% off because they're lightly used. What do you throw for an understable mid-range? Leave a comment down below. And also comment below what flight numbers we should test next. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. Now, as I was working on this video, I was talking to somebody. Let's move on from the fuse to something a little bit different. You, <laughs> It did fly really far though, so the P-strain finds its home here on our graph, and we'll and we have another disc with a minus four turn and negative. All right, let's get crazy with this one. We got a Leviathan. If you need like a 300 foot shot, you can just have some fun with it. I think it's called shoot the moon. Shoot the moon, yeah, it's pretty much just a crazy, look at that thing turning. <laughs> It's a great 300 foot shot where you just, you know, you can trust it to turn over like that. You can also put it 150 feet in the air. So. <laughs> if you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.